Okay, this is chapter three, working with financial statements. Um, as you'll see in this particular chapter, we're going to be working with the various financial statements, constructing the cash flow statement, and then working through uh, standardized financial statements and computing financial ratios. So again, the key concepts and skills that we're gonna focus on, can we compute and understand what a standardized financial statement is, is doing for us and why it's useful for comparison purposes? Um, can we go through and compute and probably more importantly, interpret some common ratios that we use in business? You know, it's the language of business. You know, what is profit margin? What is return on assets? What does it mean when we say the company has good uh, total asset turnover? Um, down here it says name the determinants of the firm's profitability. We'll definitely do that once we start talking about what's called the DuPont equation. And then finally, we'll talk about some of the drawbacks and pitfalls associated with financial statement analysis. Okay, so here's the outline of the chapter. We're obviously gonna be dealing with the various financial statements, the income statement, the balance sheet, and the statement of cash flows. We'll talk about what it means and how to construct a standardized financial statement. We'll go through the various ratios and then talk about something called the DuPont equation and then using this financial statement information to make good decisions. Okay, so if we have this hypothetical company, um, what do you notice here? Uh, this is their 2018 and 2017 numbers. So looking at this particular company, uh, it looks like they've been able to increase their cash holdings. So it went from 58 up to 108, so that's pretty good. Um, their accounts receivable balance went up. Um, you can view that two ways. On one hand, it appears that they're selling more, so therefore they're having more sales on credit. At the same time, it looks like they are not collecting payment fast enough, which is why their accounts receivable balance is going up. If we go to inventory, it looks like the company has acquired more inventory. Uh, again, they probably have acquired more inventory in response to the increase in sales that they've probably seen. But anytime they have an increase in inventory, that could mean that it isn't selling as fast as they would like. So we have to be concerned with that. Um, going down to net fixed assets, it looks like from the previous year, it went up roughly 80, 80 million, I guess. Uh, overall, the company expanded. Uh, they've expanded uh, in terms of total assets. They went from, uh, I guess, what's the scale here? Millions of dollars. So this would be 5,000 million. So that's what, 5 billion. They went from about 5 billion in assets up to about 5.6 billion in assets. Let's go to the liability side. Not much change in terms of accounts payable, so it looks like they're able to pay off their short-term suppliers. Not much change there. Notes payable right here, it went down. It went from 119 down to 26. That implies that the company has paid off its short-term debt, so that's good. Um, come down here to long-term debt, it's gone down as well. It went from 1,091 down to 843. This implies that the company has paid off some of its long-term debt, and that's pretty good. So if this company is reducing its debt, how are they really financing this, this increase in assets? Well, it looks like they're financing the increase in assets by increasing common stock. They appear to have issued more common stock uh, from 2017 up to 2018. It went from 2,167 all the way up to 2,768. So it appears that they have financed this expansion uh, by issuing common stock. Okay, real quick, the income statement. Has this been a profitable thing for them? And it appears so. Uh, they brought in revenue of, uh, I guess this is in millions of dollars, so 5,000 million would be 5 billion. They have cost of goods sold of just over 2 billion. Uh, looks like this company reports their income statement using another line item called other expenses. And so this is the cost of doing business. So that was 1.7 billion, so to speak. We take out the depreciation, which was 116. And this company has earnings before interest and tax of 1,138. So that's pretty good. Um, the interest expense is very small uh, relative to the EBIT. The interest expense is only 7 million relative to the company's EBIT, which is well over 1 billion. The reason why the interest expense is so small is that if we go back, you notice that what was true about the company. 
they reduce their debt significantly. So by reducing their debt, their interest expense went down dramatically, which leaves us with taxable income of 1,131. We pay out taxes of 238. This company is very profitable. They generated $893 million uh, worth of net income. Okay, so this company has uh, net income of 893 million. They have earnings per share, EPS of 4.68. Again, how would you get that? Again, EPS is the company's net income divided by the shares outstanding. And sometimes we use the notation shroud, which stands for shares outstanding. So in this particular case, net income was 893, and this is in millions. Uh, EPS was $4.68. And therefore, how many shares outstanding does the company have? Again, if you were to do some algebra here, X would come out to 190.9 million. Okay, so this company has 190.9 million shares outstanding. At the same time, what is their dividends per share? It's $1.53. Okay. Which brings us to the statement of cash flows, which is where we will pick up on the next video.